Our final guest on this week's Jack Swarbrick Show is a man who just exudes positive energy 24 hours a day. Notre Dame men's soccer coach Bobby Clark has guided his squad to the nation's number one ranking after a 9-1 start that includes wins over five ranked teams, three of them ranked in the top six when the Irish beat them. Clark, of course, coached the Irish to the 2013 National Championship and 14 NCAA appearances in his first 15 seasons at Notre Dame. He is also a legend in his native Scotland and was a member of the 1978 Scottish national team that advanced to the World Cup Finals in Argentina. And this week, he picked up his 202nd victory at Notre Dame when his Irish beat sixth ranked Indiana. Bobby, welcome to the Jack Swarbrick Show. Welcome. Good, good to be here, Jack and, uh, and Rachel. So I'm happy to be back again. I usually get in at this time and it usually comes after a, after a win. So. Uh, you can have me every week then, and I'll, I'll be happy. Well, I, I, when I said your energy, I, I see you. For some reason, I run into you more in the North Dome in the parking lot than anybody else, but you are always upbeat and energy-filled. You ask me how I'm doing, and even if I'm, like, dragging when I come in, I just walk by him, and it's like I'm energized for the rest of the day. I just wait for you coming in <laughs> because you make, you make my day. That, that's um, it. So that, that's the reason. I'm just hiding there waiting for okay, Jack, Jack okay. to come in. Is that just your outlook? Uh, no, I think I've always had a pretty glass full sort of feeling. No, about well, things. that's what I mean. You're just always just you're just upbeat. You're just you just obviously you love it because I, I will not give away your age, but you're at an age where you could be retired, and I think that's like the last thing from your mind. Well, wh- what do you do when you retire? You, you you find a hobby, and I always tell people I never really worked because I I played soccer for, you know as a professional for about 20 odd years and then I've coached it ever since so I've I've been just playing with my hobby all my life so I've been very lucky I think so I, that, that's one of the things that maybe makes me smile all the time. I've got to ask where did you get your nickname boss from because yeah. I hear it so often and that's a pretty incredible nickname to have not many people. <laughs> it, it, it came from Greg Martin when I came here Greg was a was a freshman and I inherited him as a freshman. He's, he's a, a lad from Dallas. And I don't know where it came from. He started calling me. And I always say to the guys, that I, I never mind what you call me. It's the way you call me it. <laughs> and I said, because I, some people will always call you sir. Yep. And I say, one of the kids that gave me most problems always addressed me as sir. And I remember Brian Weiss, my assistant, saying, if I have another guy that calls me sir, <laughs> you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throttle him. But... As I say, Greg started calling me boss, and uh, somehow it stuck, and it, it just and maybe it was an easy one from Bobby to boss. It's not too difficult. They both begin with a B and an O, and then then it changes a little bit. But that was it. So, yeah, I, I've I've uh, I've accepted it. As I say, I, I don't really mind what people call me. It's the way they call me that's more important. A few weeks ago, obviously, if you have 202 wins now, you got your 200th a few weeks ago at Alumni Stadium, big win over a ranked Syracuse team, and your team surprised you after the game with a commemorative jersey. What did that mean to you? Yeah, well, it was it was a surprise. I, I, I don't really look at statistics uh, very closely, but uh, I think one of the funny things I got, Brian Weiss, who I, I just spoke about, he, he, was, he played for me at Dartmouth, was my assistant at, uh, at Stanford, and then actually was my assistant here at Notre Dame for five years, so he saw the photo. It was, you know, of the, the, me with the, the 200 uh, number on my the jersey they presented me with, and he, he said, "You're looking really good for 200 years old." <laughs> <laughs> so that was as much. Uh, I got a lot of stick for that. A lot of people gave me grief about the 200, saying it was maybe my age, not 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 the number of games I'd won. On last week's show. One of our special guests was Joe Eschel, okay. the gentleman who oh, started the club soccer team here way back in the 1950s. What, would, what did that meeting go like when you met him? Well, it was fantastic because Joe had actually, I came over here with Aberdeen uh, in 1967 when they first introduced professional soccer to America and we were we were the Washington we were Washi- the Washington Whips and we for 9 weeks it was our off season we finished our, our season in the end of April and we came over here the end of May and played right through to almost the middle of July 
and uh, Joe, he, he was he was involved with the Houston team, which was really a Brazilian team, because what they did, they took a, a European or a South American team to a city, and we were Washington, D.C., we played the same stadium where the Senators played, so we played all our games there. Uh, the Houston team played in the Astrodome, so he remembered seeing that game because he was he was involved with the administration of the, the, the Houston. I think they were called the Houston Astros, but it was really a team called Bangu from Brazil. But we went on and, and just we had a great lunch, and the number of people that that, that we knew just over the years that we, we shared acquaintances with was was pretty fantastic and he, he was fantastic i mean he was the guy that really started soccer here you know he he was i think he was he was a yugoslav he was he was a refugee came over here and uh went to i think he got into the the rotc and uh he he he, he loved soccer and, and got it started somehow so it was it was pretty fantastic that that, that that's where it began and then it, the club team went, and then I think it was 77, 78. This is our 40th anniversary. This is actually our 40th anniversary of the team, of, of, the, of the varsity program. So it, it's, this is, it was neat that he was there because I think he, he officially started soccer at Notre Dame. And then the next group, the club team, uh, brought it into being a, the varsity status. So it was, it was pretty neat. You know, when Rachel walked in tonight, she said, I want the Coach Clark segment. So what have you seen in Coach Clark that made you so eager to get to, to interact with him here on the radio today? Well, first, um, a lot of the guys on your team are very fond of you, and they just have so much respect. And so I wanted to meet you, okay. meet the boss. Um, and also, I kind of just wanted to learn from you. I wanted to know what your mindset is being um, ranked number one um, week after week and um, how, how do you get your men ready for the next game and not taking a game off? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think the, the, the first thing is we never discuss. They know I never. That's what ever, I've heard. <laughs> You're never, never talk about, satisfied. I, I, ne I never talk about uh, rankings. It, it's something. The only ranking I, I'm interested in is the final ranking at the end of the season. Uh, so I, I never talk about that. But I, I think uh, we have a very strong schedule. I think I always pick the strongest schedule I can get. Because I always feel if you take in, especially for midweek games, if you take in a slightly, well, a perceived weaker team, then I think guys are coming out of class and it's very easy to overlook a, a perceived easy team because there's no easy games in men's soccer. And if you think for a minute you're going to come out that just a little bit, we'll beat this team, then you're going to, you, you, you could uh, get a big disappointment. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very into having a good schedule and... Uh, I thought uh, Darren McMain said a really good thing yesterday. I sent it uh, in the email. He just talked about, uh, you, you know, with the Cubs, I think they have a... It doesn't matter whether you win or lose. You've got 30 minutes to celebrate or 30 minutes to feel sorry, and then you move on. The boys will tell you that there's a great poem by Rudyard Kipling called If I F. Rudyard Kipling, you should read it, but it talks about how they're both imposters, winning and losing. And I always tell they're both imposters. And I do the same whether we win or we lose. You know, we, we, we try and take something from every game, you know, win or lose, and we take it into the next practice and into the next game. And I, 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 I move over, I move, well, I move past a win very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's harder to, to, to move past a, a loss. A loss is tough. I, I still find that very difficult, I'm afraid. But I, I camouflage it. I get, as I get older, I camouflage it much better. It sounds like you really focus on the um, process over the outcome, which I know a lot of sports teams um, talk about doing, but it's very difficult to actually get all the players into that mindset. Well, I think you know. I think we we've really worked at it. You know, we're we're we're, we're lucky. You know, we're, 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 you know, Mickey Franco and 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 Darren have 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 talked to our teams. I think they they they're in that process. You know, uh, we talk about the growth mindset. The growth mindset, and, yes. And, and I, I'm I, you know I'm a great John Wooden fan. You know, I love John Wooden. And, and if if you read any, I've got all of John Wooden's books and I read them all. And um, if you read them, really, that's all about a growth mindset. If you read his books. You know, I think if you ever want to quit or teach or do anything also, I would say John Wooden is a great, he, he's been a, I've never met him, but he, he's been a distant mentor to me. And every, every season I always take a John, one of my many John Wooden books and I decide to read it. 
and I just I just read a couple of pages every night before, so it, I can try and make it. I have another book that I'm reading at the same time, but I always read just a couple of pages every night, and I somehow it just makes a lot of sense. We are actually regrettably running out of time, but I can't let you go without asking you just as you look at this team, how good can they be by the end of the year? Well, I, I don't know. I, 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 but that's the, the, I always say to us, can we add a little bit from the first game? Can we get a little bit better the second game, a little bit better the third game, regardless of results? And by the end of the season, hopefully we've got a lot better. And we're still in the process. The guys have got to keep their feet in the ground. I think that's really important just now. But I, I think we've still got a few. Re- I think we've still got how many regular season games left? I think we've got about seven regular season games. So hopefully, by the time we hit playoff, we're seven times better. So we'll see. Well, you're off to a terrific start. Nine and one, ranked number one in the country. Bobby, always a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. No, thanks, Jack. Thanks, Rachel. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this.